Hi, I'm Heather, Chief Book Lover at Indigo. As a passionate reader, I'm always excited to share the books that I have fallen in love with. And I know you have asked, does Heather really read every book she picks? The answer is yes, I do. And this holiday season, there have been so many standout books that literally I couldn't put down. And I'm delighted to share my Heather's picks for holiday 2021. Let's start with fiction. There is no greater feeling than reading the first page of a new novel and knowing you're in the hands of a master storyteller, unless it is giving that experience to someone you love. These are my fiction picks for the holiday. The Apollo Murders by Chris Hatfield. Written by Canada's, in fact, the world's most beloved astronaut, Chris Hatfield, this gripping page turner will surprise you with its twists and turns. It's full of everything that makes a story thrilling. Intrigue, bad guys, treasure, all wrapped up in the 70s Cold War space race. And what makes this book great is the deep, unique experience that Chris brings to every page. Even more mind-blowing is that this astronaut can write with the best of them. I so recommend this book. And speaking of people who are incredible, here is two people who are incredible. State of Terror by Hillary Rodham Clinton and Louise Penny. Two brilliant women from two different worlds came together to create a surprising, powerful writing duo. The State of Terror is set against the halls of power of Washington and hot spots around the world, and it's an exhilarating read. This book is the ultimate, I cannot put it down book, and that's how I felt. And finally, there's a piece of fiction by one of Canada's greatest writing treasures, The Strangers by the award-winning author Katerina Vermet. This book was voted by Indigo's book experts as our number one best book of the year. With characters you'll never forget, it traces the intergenerational trauma and burdens carried by Canada's Indigenous communities, as well as the power of connection to heal. Vermette tells the story beautifully in this poignant and urgent new novel. I was moved to tears, but ultimately to optimism by her writing. Memoirs are an incredible way to tap into the lives of people who have fully captured our imagination. And here are the memoirs that have swept me away in the last several months. Let me start with this one, which I just love. Ninth Street Women by Mary Gabriel. This book will transport you to the New York of the 40s and 50s, and in particular, the New York art scene. This meticulously researched and seductively written historical memoir pulls us into the lives of five astonishing women artists and their relentless effort to make their voices heard. The world of art changed because of their work and the work of the men who were their partners. And it's all here in this fantastic book. This is truly a gift that anyone who receives will be enchanted with. And now for a book that surprised me and has stayed with me since I first read it so many months ago. It's Miss Dior, a story of courage and couture by Justine Picardi. For any lover of historical fiction or historical memoir, Miss Dior is the book. This memoir traces the life of Catherine, the beloved sister of the iconic fashion designer, Christian Dior. Who could have imagined that the young sister of the famed designer would commit herself, a devout Catholic with nothing to gain and only 20 some odd years old, to risking her life in the French resistance. An unsung hero of World War II to be sure, Catherine Dior actually ended the war inside of one of the most notorious concentration camps. The story of her journey, her survival, her special relationship with her brother, and the mark it all left is all in this book. And now for my number one nonfiction book of the year. Mm -hmm. Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. This book is a masterpiece of narrative reporting on the opioid crisis. Compelling and absorbing, the author examines the history of the Sackler dynasty. It is a cautionary tale that paints a disturbing portrait of greed and indifference to human suffering that built one of the world's great fortunes. And it is also a story of what can only be called intentional collusion of those who had the power to stop it and didn't. 
No one who picks up this book will be able to put it down or look away. Julia Child said it best, people who love to eat are always the best people, and I couldn't agree more. For all the chefs and foodies on your list, two great recommendations. Otto Lange Test Kitchen Shelf Love. This is the incredible Otto Lange, chef at London, England's hardest to get into restaurants and author of some of our most beloved cookbooks. This cookbook will bring anyone's kitchens to life with extraordinary flavors and creative recipes that I know will be made again and again. I have been cooking and eating from this book with my family for weeks and I can't wait for more. And while we're on the subject of cookbooks, That Sounds So Good by Carla Lally Music. And how great is that name? Carla has a long career in creating delicious recipes, and That Sounds So Good is her debut cookbook. It's packed with delicious recipes for real everyday life. Split between weekday and weekend cooking, this book really is perfect for the on-the-go at-home chef. Would you like to meet my on-the-go at-home chef? Hey, Car. Hi. By the way, these are the recipes we've tried, and it's so awesome, so tasty. I just can't wait to go through the whole book. And now for my coffee table picks for this holiday season. My first is Wonderland. The latest from renowned photographer Annie Leibovitz will delight any photography lover. In fact, I would say anyone open to being inspired. Every page is enchanting. And next, a very special book, Renegades by Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen. Need I say more? Two of America's icons share the stage in this unique tribute book. Featuring rare archival material, it's a captivating and beautifully illustrated keepsake of two men who consider themselves outsiders, yet who became central to all of our lives. And to close, a book I think belongs in everyone's home. I just love this book. Revision and Resistance by Kent Monkman, perhaps Canada's most extraordinary living artist. And it is an absolute treasure. This book is an exploration of some of his most ambitious work and a provocation to all of us to re-examine our Indigenous history. Images from this book now adorn the atrium in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City a truly breathtaking expression of Canada in one of the most important galleries in one of the greatest cities in the world. And now, from my family to yours, happy holidays. <laughs>